Um, this is going to be a quick little video. Hopefully the sub has uh, kind of walked you through what's going to happen today. Um, we're going to do a couple quick problems. These were the problems that were plaguing students on the last quiz. So I wanted to run through the factoring and solving process for quadratics and, uh, that were of this form. Now, they're on your, you're going to take a quiz in the last 20 minutes of the class. I'm going to give you guys some time to work on 2.5 today. But uh, what I want you guys to do is remember um, there's, there are multiple solving methods. Um, so this isn't the only one that's on the quiz. But um, I want you to refresh on how to do these harder factoring questions because there are um, a couple of these on the quiz. So let's all work together. I'm going to do this first one. And then as a group, we will, um, or ind individually, we're going to um, try the next two. And then you guys can check with the video once you're done. So the first step in solving a quadratic is basically determining um, whether or not you can so solve it taking the square root or whether you should try to factor. And is it factorable? Well, we're not going to be able to square root this because to square root something, it should look like uh, it should look like you know something squared equals a number, and it currently doesn't look like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it into standard form. So I'm going to write this as 24x to the third minus 10x squared minus 4x equals uh, 0. Okay? So we're, we're going to try and solve this first. We can't take the square root. Is this factorable? Now, when you're factoring, we always follow that factoring flowchart process, which means we should look for a GCF at the beginning. There isn't always a GCF other than one, um, right? So there isn't always um, something that we have to pull out, but you, you do need to check because it makes it much simpler to factor. So is there a GCF amongst all the terms? Yes, there is. They're all divisible by 2. All the numbers are divisible by 2, and they all have an x. So I'm going to go through, and we're going to pull out um, an x from each term, and we're going to divide each of the numbers by 2. So we'll get 12x to the second minus 5x minus 2. Now, we've pulled out our GCF, 2x, but now can we factor this thing that is left over? And of course we can. So this, notice um, the a value is not 1, it is 12, which means we're going to have to use the break apart method, which means we're looking, of factors of, looking for factors of a times c. a times c is negative 24. We are looking for factors of negative 24 that add up to b, which is negative 5. So let's write out our factors of negative 24. I'm not going to write all the negatives, so we'll just do 1 and 24. Um, 2 and times 12 works. 3 times 8 works. 4 times 6. Okay, now if they multiply to negative 24, then their signs are different. So we're looking for a difference of 5. And 3 and 8 have a difference of 5. Okay, this is, if, you, if, you're, if you're trying to reference this, I believe this is from 2-4 day 2. The method that I'm currently using is from 2-4 day 2 in your notes. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that break apart method just on what's left on the inside here. So this will be 2x times... Um, let's see. Now we're going to break apart the middle term inside the parentheses here. That's going to be 2x. And then if there's a negative term, I always put that first. So the 8's got to be negative. Um, uh, minus 8x plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. All right, so I've taken this negative 5x and I've split it up into um, negative 8x plus 3x. Now, the reason I chose those numbers is because those are special numbers. What they're going to do is they are going to make it so I can um, factor out a GCF here, factor out a GCF here, and we will have a common factor. Since I'm about to put parentheses inside parentheses, I'm going to switch the outside ones to brackets just temporarily. Um, so let's uh, group the first two. That will be 12x squared minus 8x is in the first group. Put a plus in the middle, group the second two, that's 3x minus 2. Let's continue down our page here. Now we're going to take the GCF 
of the first two. Let me, let me, I'm going to fit this to width. We're scrolling down. There we go. Now we're going to take the GCF of the first two. What do they have in common? Uh, we can divide them both by 4 and an x. 4 and an x. So if I pull out a 4, 4x four times what is uh, 12x squared? That'll be 3x. 4x times what is minus 8x? Minus 2. Now you'll see that the second group, the second group already has a 3x minus 2. So what number would I factor out there, or what number rather would I distribute to 3x minus 2 that would give me 3x minus 2? Well, that number is 1. Okay. So the number that's, that, that, that we're going to factor out here, or not factor out, is 1. And what we have left here is 2x times. Now, we have this common factor in each term of 3x minus 2. So the final form is going to be 2x times 3x minus 2 times 4x plus 1. And just a reminder where those things are coming from. Just like we factored out the 4x here and we left what, what remained, we factored out 4x from each of these terms and we left the things that would remain, um, we are pulling out this 3x minus 2. 3x minus 2 is coming out of, it's like we're undoing the distributive property. And the things that are in front of each pair of parentheses is what we leave behind in our product. So those things end up going into the second group. So that's where those come from. Okay, now I've forgotten something in the last two steps, and that would be my <clears throat> equals zero is missing. So I have equals zero equals zero. We are not done solving yet. We have factored correctly, but we're not done solving. We now have to apply the zero product property, and we're going to get three solutions. This whole product is equal to zero if 2x is equal to zero, and 2x is equal to zero if x is equal to zero. Okay. This whole product is equal to zero if 3x minus 2 is equal to zero, which is the same as saying x equals 2 thirds. This whole product is zero if 4x plus 1 is equal to zero. This is the zero product property, which means if we subtract 1, divide by 4, x equals negative 1 over 4 is a solution. So those are our three solutions. And there is the, a picture of the complete solving process for solving this quadratic equation. We did one step at a time. Hope that was helpful. All right. You guys are going to do this one on your own. On your own. You guys try it on your own. And then you can speed watch the video or skip through it or watch it if you need an explanation for those that need an explanation. Hoping, you know, ideally we're getting a good chunk of people that are getting this right. I want everyone trying. Everyone doing this as a review. You're about to do it on the quiz. Okay. Pause the video. Here we go. All right. This is in standard form. Um... So we're just going to go ahead and start factoring. It's already in standard form. Um, there's no GCF other than once. So we can't pull out an X or anything. So we're looking for two numbers. Um, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to A times C. A times C is negative 8. Two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to positive 7. So what are those numbers? They have to add to positive 7. So the factors of 8. The two number factors of 8 are 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. There's no other way to, uh, to cut that one. Um, so 1 and 8, 2 and 4. Which are the ones that are going to be possible? It'll be 1 and 8 since they are different sides. So I'm going to break apart the middle term. That's 2x. Um, we'll do the negative term first. Um, minus x plus 8x minus 4 equals 0. Now we group and group, um, or you can just recognize, hey, look, what's the GCF of the first two? They both have an x in common, so this will be 2x minus 1 if I pull out the x. Now how do I make the second two turn into 2x minus 1? Or what number would I distribute? Is it possible? And the number that you would multiply through is a positive 4 equals 0. This one is much shorter than the last one. So we are factoring out 
2x minus 1. And what's remaining is x plus 4. But we are not finished because I'm looking for the numbers that make this equation true. And we're now going to apply the zero product property. These two things multiplied together um, will equal 0 if 2x minus 1 equals 0. Or x equals 2x equals 1, x equals 1 half. This product will equal 0 if x plus 4 is equal to 0, which means x equals negative 4. Those are your two solutions. So do a count, do a count in the class, have students raise their hand. How many of them got this? If it's looking, uh, if it's looking good, then, you know, if it's the whole class, maybe, uh, maybe you guys can move on to just working on 2-5. Um, if you guys got that one right on your own, you can maybe work on to move on to working to two, move on to working on to two two five homework if you haven't done that already. Um, if you did not get it right, or if you want some more practice, try this one in green. This one is a little bit harder. Um, so maybe people are up for a challenge here. How do we solve this quadratic equation? Well, the first thing is we can't take the square root to solve it because it doesn't look like something squared equals a number. So we're going to go ahead and move some stuff around. We're going to move it into standard form. You guys can pause the video here um, if you want to try it on your own. So we're going to end up with x squared minus 25x minus 14. This is in standard form equals 0. So try and solve this on your own. Pause the video. If you don't see it, it's OK. All right. Um, so you are allowed a calculator on the quiz. So um, um, for us here, we are looking for two numbers that multiply to a times c, which is negative 84, and they have to add to b, which is negative 25. Um, negative 25, perfect. So let's go ahead and write down our factors of 84. Um, 1 and 84, 2 and 42. 3 times, uh-oh, what is that one? 42 times, pull out a 3, 14, is that right? No, that's not right. It'll be 6 times 14, so 3 times 28. 28. Um, 4 times 21, 5, 6 times 14, I think that's right. 6 times 14, and then 7 times 12. Yeah, I think that's all of them. OK. You don't need to write all of them. Um, but you got to be careful, because if you look here, 44 and 21 add to 25, and 3 and 28 subtract 25. Which one are we interested in? We're interested in 3 and 28. And the reason I can tell is because the two numbers have to multiply to negative 84. Um, and they have to add to negative 25, but the only way that's possible, if they multiply to negative 84, they're different signs, so we're really looking for a difference of 25 here. So let's go ahead and break this apart, the middle term. That'll be 6x squared um, minus 28x plus 3x minus 14. Actually, you know what? This is the easy way. This is the easy way to do it this way. You can do it this way. You can get the right answer. But I'm going to do it the hard way, just in case some students did it this way on accident, or they chose this way. Um, if, you, if you put the plus sign first, you'll have plus 3x minus 28x minus 14. Well, maybe that's not the hard way. Let me think about this for a sec. Ah, uh, no, they're equally not, not that bad. We'll do it this way. GCF of the first two. What's the GCF of the first two? Well, we can pull out. Um, now, the reason the reason I said that this one was the hard way is because the negative comes second, which some students forget um, in the grouping process. But um, you know, technically, in the notes, I said you're supposed to do this grouping step, even though I'm not going to mark off points if you don't show it. You need to know that you're sliding. You got to put a plus in the middle. You're sliding that negative sign over into that second group, right? GCF of this group is they both have a three. They both have an x. So we'll pull out a 3x, and you'll have 2x plus 
plus 1 left over. And then in here, we're pulling out a negative 14 times 2x plus 1. You're trying to get it to look the same. Now our common factor is 2x plus 1. So we're going to pull that out. And you'll have 3x minus 14 remaining equals 0. And now we can apply the zero product property to get our two solutions. 3x minus 14 equals 0. Which are x equals negative 1 half and x equals 14 over 3. All right, team. We did it. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully you have a good, productive day, and we'll see you next time.